かそんな話一切しないのかそんな話一切しないのはい。And so begins our sake adventure. This video was made possible by Biotoxin. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt for sake, and we're gonna begin in a G6 building in a place called Emadea. We're gonna try to find the most expensive sake. Bitch, he told her off. She was like, I'm not walking. I'm and you're all like, Pretty Japanese self. So. I was like, nah. We're so late. We're like at the very, very last moment we can be in here, but this is how we roll. So, this is the first location. I know very, very little about sake, so this is a whole learning experience for me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, he's run away from you, those two people there, look. <laughs> this is very out of my comfort zone. I began this adventure by asking if they had anything at all on my list that I could try. <laughs> they struggled finding things on my list, so they made some suggestions of what could be close to it. Okay, you have that one. Yeah, we have We're that off one. to a shaky start, but I'm confident that they will choose some good sake for us to try. Sake made from rice is a staple in most Asian countries, and it's ranked in Japan by how clean or polished it is. This is a very new experience for me. I've never tried sake anywhere, so I don't know what's normal. I really want to try the ones off of the list, but they only have one kind off here. Down here is the drinking temperature of the given bottle. Cold is premium, supposedly, and hot masks the taste of bad sake. So on the back of the bottle, as you can see, is the recommended drinking temperature, and cold usually means a better quality sake. Really, really good. <laughs> you know, that one's good too. That was another sweet one. Yeah, it's different, they're all sweet. I don't know anything about sake. What's that? I don't know sake. Okay. And then kamenushi. It's like to... I heard that like high class sake should always be cold. Uh, some of them are like okay with like 5 to 40 degree, like, like uh, you know, like one degree. What's the most expensive sake? So I asked them the most expensive sake that they had, and it was about 300,000 which is three grand, but I was unable to try that one. So I'm like, which one can I try? Okay, 20,000. 20, 200 bucks. 15 years, 15 years. The most expensive one that they have that I can try here. This bottle was brewed there and it was aged 15 years and it was $200. Okay, it's much different. It's smooth. <laughs> I wouldn't tell, I would be able to tell the difference. <laughs> Drink it classy. Taste the hint of Money this. Pink, pinky up. Oh yes. So the difference here. To be honest, I would be happy. You can tell this one's higher class and will get you more smashed though. You think so? Yeah. You can tell with like the alcohol quality is like higher in that, definitely. Maybe it's because I'm like a sake virgin or I don't know what I'm talking about, but I honestly thought the $15 sake was better than the $200 sake. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I was trying to go gulp, gulp, and then it caught in my throat. With what? I was going to be like, gulp, gulp, gulp. My overall um, consensus is thumbs up for all of them. I'm not picky. The $20 one is my favorite. $15 is a good runner up. So yeah, $200 one is smooth, but um, I'm not picky enough to know the difference. The way that it's made is they put a yeast bacteria into the rice and then age it. Okay. 
Now that I found out kind of the basics of sake, I was ready to continue this adventure into a new day. We're gonna go on to the next location. It's gonna be a different day, but it's gonna be the next location. So let's go try some more sake. For the second day of our adventure, we went to Tokyo Station and I was looking for kind of a restaurant area. I found a random restaurant called Bunshiro and for this time, I wanted to try warm sake to see the difference. I looked up the cheapest options they had, which really weren't that cheap. So this is day two of trying sakes. And today we're just going to go to a kind of like a restaurant type of place up in Tokyo Station or near Tokyo Station. This place was around 500 yen, which is around four some dollars for a little bit of sake tasting, which is kind of expensive. Sake, sake from rice, that's fermented. And then so shoshu. It's distilled, like vodka. These are the two that I tried from this place. Too. That one's zesty. I don't know the difference between these two. Yeah, one of them is a lot stronger. This one's a lot stronger, whichever one that is. These are way more powerful than the ones we tried. Is that why? That's how you are, yeah. I like the better cold. But I would not recommend getting sake in kind of like a restaurant that's expensive. Because you can literally get it in the gas station for like a dollar. And I'm going to try that. I would give this a in between. Nice classy cups. <laughs> They're kind of really gross. Like I don't really like them. I like sweet sake better. That's the consensus. Okay, let's uh let's go find some really cheap sake. The ranking of sake starts with table sake and moves its way up to how clean and polished it is, like I said okay, before. So we're in the convenience store. This is just a 7-Eleven. You can whack in the okay. microwave. So how much is sake that? one cup for six. That sake that we had at that one place in Tokyo Station actually packed a punch. I can still feel it right now. We should try this or we should try sake in a carton to compare the really cheap sake here. Tell me more, tell me more, did you get very far? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have them heat this up in the microwave. We're gonna compare this cheap sake to the $200 sake that we had. It's gonna be a bit different because we did heat this up and the other one was cold. He's worried about just opening it for us. Arigato. Arigato. Blazing. Oh, it doesn't smell good. Two dollar sake. Or it's a little less than two dollars. Maybe two dollars. Versus the two hundred dollar sake we had in the first. Two. That's actually a pot. But not that bad. It's not that bad. It's better than the one we just had. Making of one cup, yeah. So this is a cup of sake. And you still get messed up from that. I would give it, yeah, I <laughs> this whole thing would be fucked up. I'll be like blackout drunk if I had all of this. Because I'm already like tipsy from the other stuff we had and that wasn't even a lot. So I would give this, uh, for its price, I'd give it a thumbs up. So if you want some mediocre sake, From my short experience with sake, I find warm sake to be much harder to drink than cold sake, and it's kind of bitter and gross. It's illegal here to drink in the streets, by the way. <laughs> people get really fucked up here, and it's very common to see people passed out on the streets. Day three, and we are in Shimbashi, going to a sake bar called Classics. You want So today, I really wanted to explore the bar scene. Hey, so it is day three on our sake adventure, and we are in this really swanky place called Classics. And I wouldn't be able to go here without Erica, because everything's in Japanese. We're going to try their recommended sake right now, and I'll let you know what I like and what I don't like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The sake here was poured into a cup, but overflowed into this square cup, and you basically had two shots of it, which was quite a lot. Mm. I like that one. It's sweet and spicy, and it's um, it's not overpowering in either one. So it tastes yummy. I give it a thumbs up. We went with the recommended sakes at this bar, and they were just okay and, and kind of just normal. 
I don't think I'm ever going to be at a point where I can really, really taste the huge difference between different types of sake. <laughs> The other, the first one was sweet and this one is uh, more spicy and dry. Um, they both tasted the same. <laughs> <laughs> I think you will. We veered off the path of sake to try some more Japanese alcohol. We tried yumishi, which is made from plums. Japanese sake is called nihonshu, which is made from rice. This is shochu. It can be made from potatoes and other things. So okay. a very common drink in Japan is the lemon sour. Lemon sour. Okay. So it's shochu, uh, potato alcohol, uh, with a lot of lemon syrup and soda. It's a very standard isakaya cocktail for Japanese people. It is sour, it's sour. Yeah, because it's a lemon sour. Yeah. <laughs> At this point in my journey, honestly, I'm pretty alcoholed out. <laughs> Speak slowly. Stop. <laughs> this, this lineup is old. I was trying to try a little bit more from our list, but this guy wanted us to try the recommended. My choice. Yes. <laughs> my choice. Are you this choice? Oh? No. <laughs> he was very convincing and I didn't want to be rude, so I tried most of his recommendations, but I really wanted to try a sweet, sweet fruit flavored one, but I didn't get to. Very sweet. Very sweet, yes. Very, very, very sweet. Very, very. <laughs> my, my osusume. His recommendation. Yes. Ah. Recommend. Yes, you. My recommend is here. Okay. 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 Can I choose one of these? No. No. Okay. This is no, but no recommend. Okay. Can I can I do one on here? Two from here? Yes. Yes. So can I do Dobro. one of these? Okay, can I do that? One? Yeah. And then you choose yes. two here. <laughs> so we're gonna try three different sakes at Tokyo oh, Port Brewery. Back. This is the last stop on our sake trying adventure. So this is the one that he chose from the list. Dobrok. No, no filter. No filtered. Dobrok. Dobrok. Name? Yamada Nishiki. Rice name. Rice. Yamada Nishiki. I don't know why, but the ones they always recommend are kind of boring. <laughs> like apple. Like apple? Okay. Since this is a cultural experience, I want to be open-minded. This one tastes like apple. Mm. Very beautiful. I'm excited. Can I try? Oh wow, I've never had unfiltered sake before. <laughs> you want to try? Sure. Go ahead. Bro. It's very mild. It tastes awesome. It's very good. I like that one. It has some texture to it, so I give it a thumbs up. This is the second one, the one that he recommended. That's good too, that has more of a punch. That's like a medium type. I give that one a thumbs up too. Oh, they're so different. Yeah, those things, those two are very different. That one's a lot more mild. And this is the apple. Let's see how this one is. Oh, wow. Does it taste like cider? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah, they're all very different. This has an aftertaste to it as well. This is the most unique we've tried. Yeah, this one's, this one or this one? All of them. All I think very, this is the, yeah. the most unique This one. is the most unique. And this one's also very unique because it has a before and aftertaste. I can't put my finger on it. Apple taste, but not to use yeah. apple. Yeah, it's not like apple. Only rice. Right, there's no apple in it. Yeah, because I like the I like the texture and chunk of this. Yeah. So yeah. Unfiltered is cool. Yeah, I, I like, like it. unfiltered things. It's kind of pulpy. So this is Tokyo Port Brewery, and it's, a lot of it's all in Japanese. Yeah. So we've tried three different kinds. The unfiltered is the one that he recommended. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.